Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Freewell V2 Magnetic Hybrid Filter. We're going to essentially look at what this product is for, some of my testing and my final thoughts. For my drone subscribers, I know I cannot control the weather. You can probably see outside how bright it is though right now, but the last few weeks hasn't been great. However, I did get an opportunity to fly the DJI Air 3 with the wide angle lens, so stay tuned for the next video as we're gonna be covering that. If you're new, hello, my name is Demetrius and I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mix of entertaining and educational content. Subscribe to stay up to date. Now, let's get on with the video and check out the Freewell V2. Yeah. Now, first of all, this isn't a sponsored video. However, Freewell did send me the V2 magnetic hybrid filter as well as a mist filter to test, but they didn't give me any sort of direction. So this is a unbiased review, my own opinions. Hopefully Freewell will like it and hopefully they get to send me more stuff in the future so I can test and show you guys. Links to this product is gonna be in the description box down below uh, with either directly from Freewell or Amazon. There is no obligation to purchase. However, if you do use those links, I get a small kickback and that just means it helps out the channel which I can make more videos for you guys. Now let's take a look at what's in the box of the Freewell V2 system here. Now, first of all, this is a hybrid V and D CPL filter three to seven stop and it's an 82 millimeter I have here. If you have a smaller diameter lens, you can just use step up rings and then just use the attachment magnetic plate to use the free world filter here. It has German optics and multi-layered coating process and this filter stands strong against scratches, water, dust and oil resistant. The size is available are from 49 all the way to 82. Now the ND3 to 7 stop is the equivalent of an ND8 to ND128. It also has this lovely leather pouch, which is quite rigid and it even has a drawstring so you can pull up and get access to the other filters that you want to use or display. It even has a cap for protection. So if you did decide to take it off and then put it in your pocket or in your camera bag, fairly easy to use. And the V2 magnetic hybrid filter starts at 149 US dollars. And there is a pro kit as well for 229 US dollars. And this is directly from Freewell's website. Now, how do we use this filter? Like, how does it go on this lens here? Now, it's fairly straightforward. First of all, find out what size thread you need for your lens. So in this case, I'm using the Sigma 24 to 70 and it happens to be an 82 millimeter diameter. You simply screw on the thread first. Then you take your Freewell V2 magnetic filter here and all you do is simply just attach it on and you can hear the click of the magnet. You have two screws either side, which you wanna tighten. And now this is securely attached. And then when you're outside, to adjust the CPL, all you have to do is just loosen these slightly and then rotate the CPL filter until you have your desired look. And then just tighten the screws again to secure the lens. Now to adjust the variable ND, you can see it has a three to seven stop. All you have to do is just rotate it to get your desired look again when filming outside. It even has this lovely cover with a ring pull and it's magnetized as well. So you can just essentially put this in your pocket and then when you don't need it, you can just simply put it back on and it's magnetized as well. This I really like. And let's say you didn't want to have this on your lens. You can simply just unscrew, pull off, and then, and this is the cover here. And it only goes one way, which is great because otherwise the magnets push. So that's pushing right now. So it's the A side, all you have to do. And there you go, that's nice and protected now. The great thing is, as this is a magnetic filter system, it's supposed to be layered with other creative filters. They did send me this mist filter as well, Freewell, which is great. And again, it's got this drawstring, which if you pull up, it pulls the filter out for you. And then that way you don't get your grubby mitts all over the lens or the filter. And then because it's magnetized, it literally just attaches on. And now you have a V and D CPL mist filter all in one, which is fantastic. And then if you want to take it off, just pull it off and then put this back in the pouch. It's even labeled at the back here as well. Now, what is this Freewell V2 magnetic hybrid system used for here? So you use this mainly for filming video outside in order to keep your shutter speed double your frame rate. So when you're outside, it's obviously too bright. So you have to add ND, darken the filter in order to keep your shutter speed 
locked at double of your frame rate. So if you're shooting one over 30, you wanna have your shutter speed at one over 60, and therefore you wanna adjust your ND accordingly. The other thing that you could use this for is car photography to get rid of those unwanted reflections, even removing reflections from buildings or glass, even water as well. So if you wanna make them more see-through and get rid of that reflection. You can also use it for car panning shots where if you're shooting in shutter priority, just like I do, and you wanna have your aperture a little bit wider, you can just adjust the ND so you can have it a lower aperture. And a bonus feature, it also protects the glass of your lens. As you know that these lenses can be pretty expensive, so having a filter on top can help protect that. Now let's move on to my testing and what I have discovered when using the Freewell V2 system. So first of all, I did test each of my lenses. If you've seen my other videos, which I've been testing filters in the past, I've got four lenses, so the Sigma 24 to 70, my kit lens 18 to 135, the Sony 70 to 50 telephoto, and the Sigma 60 millimeter. Now I tested this with each of them and there was no vignetting. However, that being said, with the kit lens, the filter doesn't have vignetting itself. It's the actual, if I can take this off. So there's no vignetting with this with any of the lenses. However, what I did discover was when I was layering it, is that when you have this adjustment plate on top with the step up rings I was using, the vignetting was caused by this. But it's not the end of the world, that's my kit lens, I don't use it as much anymore. And even then, you would just go to the next size up, so 24 millimeter, just punch in or crop in. So it's not the end of the world. I did test to see if there's gonna be an X pattern. This isn't exactly gonna exist because it only goes from three to seven stops in comparison to the week before when I was using K and F's. ND2 to 2000, you're more likely to see it because of how close the cross pattern is going to be with the ND there. You might want to check that video out and it's going to be linked somewhere up here. Now recently the filters I have been testing haven't exactly had feedback, they just rotate. At least with the Freewell system here, there is a hard stop at the ND3 and the ND7 and it is pretty firm to rotate, so there is a very firm twist there, there is no actual feedback between the NDs, but again, I don't think that's the end of the world, and you just adjust accordingly, because this is firm enough, it's gonna stay where it is. And I did try to do some testing with some low exposure. The longest I could get with this, with the conditions I was presented, was around six seconds. Okay, so currently testing the V2 from Freewell, and I have it on the darker setting, so seven stops of light, so ND128. I have it in aperture priority, closed up the aperture as much as possible, ISO 100. The longest exposure we're currently getting with these conditions is six seconds. So if you wanna go longer daytime exposures, you're gonna need a stronger ND filter. I also tested this for car panning, tested this for reflections, and filming video as well. Now bear in mind when I am filming video on the Sony a6400, it doesn't have in-body stabilization. So the footage is gonna look very jerky and I have to stabilize this in DaVinci Resolve. So sometimes they can come out wobbly. It just depends on the type of video. It's something that I'm working towards, which I will cover in future videos when shooting on this camera. Now let's move on to my final thoughts. First of all, the Freewell V2 is not compatible with any of its previous uh, products. Only going forward will it be compatible with more kits and creative filters that you're gonna have for this V2 system. Surprisingly for the money, it's actually pretty good. So if you're an aspiring filmmaker or an enthusiast, this is very budget friendly. I think this was like 200 Canadian. So it was 150 US, 200 Canadian thereabouts. For what you get from this kit, the CPL V and D, that is very useful, especially if you're gonna be doing car videography or car photography. You're gonna have a CPL to cut those reflections and the ND as well to be able to film during the day. So that's where I think it's geared towards most mainly filmmakers more than photographers, not that you can't use it as a photographer. Also, the three to seven stops of light range, so ND8 to ND128 is actually pretty good. It's pretty much similar to what I have with the DJI Air 3 compared to other filters, which I have not tried, but they normally stop at five. I believe it's five. So you may need, and then you have to swap out to another one. Whereas this one, because you have such a good range here, you don't have to swap out lenses. You could, this could just be your one CPL ND filter here. Now, if you wanted to do daytime long exposure, again, I did mention this earlier, it's better to have something like an ND1000 or 2000 
to do those daytime photography shots. But again, this is not its main purpose. This is mainly for filming. So when I was testing the polarization with the Freewell V2, I had to keep on unscrewing both of these and I had to keep on adjusting it throughout the day. I felt like every time the angle changed, the polarization had to change. So I had to keep on adjusting it. And this can get pretty fiddly with loosening and tightening the screws. You could possibly lose the shot then. But again, if you're trying to do that for photos, it can be kind of annoying. With video, I think you'll just set it and leave it. Now, these screws here are pretty small. I wish they came with a spare set because I remember I put this in my pocket because it got too dark and I just put the mist filter on. And all suddenly when I brought it out of my pocket, one of them was missing and I was like, oh my God, I just got this. Luckily, one of them was in my pocket, but already I can see these being easily lost. They don't have any form of stop. They literally pull out. And even just using the one isn't enough. And I have them both on because when I take the cover off, it's fine, it's no problem, right? This just magnetizes back on. However, I've noticed that these are obviously very easily lost. So I'm gonna like put this in my pocket. So I don't lose it or put it in, hold it in my hand. So if I try to pull this off, then you can see it just there. The magnet is a good as strong, but this isn't exactly, you need both screws. To me that it doesn't, I'm not comfortable with just having the one and that's already tight. So on the other side, you can see it's lifting. If I try pulling the cap off, it actually lifts the side here, as you can see. That's something minor, it's nothing major. I just wish they would add a set of screws. Otherwise you can buy a pair, I think it's like five US dollars extra. I also really do enjoy this magnetic system. It's actually pretty good. Uh, I don't feel like it was gonna come off the camera at any point. I do like the ring pull of the actual cover and the back cover, it feels very protective. And even adding the creative filters like the mist filter, it's just simply on and that is pretty secure. I didn't feel like this was gonna come off. So the magnetic system is actually pretty good. The other options you have is a UV, a glow mist and a light streak. The only thing is once you put one of these creative filters on, this cover doesn't exactly sit well and this could easily fall off. So you're gonna have to take the creative filter off, then put the cover back on and that is more secure. I wish the cover would work on top of the creative filters here, but again, not the end of the world. And I do enjoy the cases. It like, at least it comes with cases, like really nice high quality cases. The only thing I would say is I probably wouldn't use this because, well, when trying to put this in my camera bag, it's gonna take up a lot of space. I'd rather just put the filter straight in and that way save more space. Uh, but I do like this, that they provided it. Some companies, if you, again, if you saw my video last week, they don't exactly provide high quality cases, but it's a case. This one's really nice and it has little dividers in and a drawstring so you don't get your fingers, your grubby fingers all over the, the lens. I believe that is everything from the product, how to use it, my testing and final thoughts. Remember, check the links in the description box below if you are interested in picking this up. Also, let me know what camera and lens you're using and are you a beginner looking to get into photography? Oh, I almost forgot. Remember to tune in next week as well, where we're gonna cover the DJI Air 3 wide angle lens. Subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And YouTube recommend you check out this video next. See you in the next one. Peace.